advice on how to become healthier. So looking at this sort of question, I have best interest in as I am to be consumer of it. intimate and authentic experience with YouTube celebrities. So YouTubers have become incredibly popular and influential figures in today's media. The distinction between YouTubers and celebrities have become blurred, and they, they are considered ordinary, a girl or boy almost next door, and they're very easy to relate to. Some, some YouTubers are very personal and not they talk about, as many, like those two uh, famous uh, American YouTubers who both did coming out videos, so they're very, they're very personal with their content. So as many film from home, it gives a sense of inter intimacy and even stronger connections made with fans. Fans feel that YouTubers are more authentic and more, and more relatable than celebrities themselves. But with vlogging, how casual they are, the way they engage with fans, the way they act, and even the way they present themselves, um, and even the way they hold their camera, it's very casual and again intimate and creates an even tighter bond with fans. The fans feeling as though these people are considered normal. of people's lives and can be acquired in more areas than ever before. So social media again has become massively influential in today's society. YouTube is a much more interactive form of media with people uh, filming themselves for others' enjoyment. Um, images are a powerful tool but videos are even more personal. You see the personal interaction and you see this person living their life. So thinking of fitness vlogs and fitness in, gen in general within the media, um, people are exposed to more thin inspiration images these days. With many fitness vloggers, watching this healthy, attractive person live in this life makes people believe that they can also. So I'm hopeful this rise in popularity of fitness blogging and vlogging, a newer type of social media has been connected to this new type of ideal body. So vlogging is quite a new media platform in comparison to more traditional media such as magazines, but with vlogging being new and new healthy eating trend hitting the mainstream media hard, vlogging has taken this new type of ideal body shape onto its platform. So vlogging can make the followers believe in that particular lifestyle. Many don't realise that person is only filming for 10 or maybe more minutes of their day. Um, and the majority of them post a more positive outlook on their life than negative. So vloggers are from the end of entertainment as, as YouTubers as a whole, but with fitness vloggers, portraying this particular life is very different. Some are qualified and others aren't, which is con considered a worry as people could be telling their followers information that may not be correct. This will be discussed later on more in the presentation. So here's a few screenshots of a British uh, YouTuber's vlog. I wanted to show it all, but I haven't really got time. So um, this YouTuber will be mentioned more throughout the presentation, but I want to focus on how she engages with the followers in the vlog. So she's vlogging on holiday, she's on a surf retreat, and more background information, she's a professional personal trainer and blogger. So throughout the vlog, she updates her followers on what she's doing, eating, general, general information about her day, and she talks to the camera quite a lot. Other people then join the blog, she shows up she's eating once again and with herself talking to the camera. So throughout the vlog, there's a sense of in, um, intimacy and closeness with her talking about her day, how, how she's feeling, and, and also even the way that she holds the camera. As the audience, you feel as though she's talking to a friend and how comfortable she's coming across. So this is, this is only a small um, demonstration of how the vlog is in general. But we're look, looking at this as a brief example to start with our incredibly personal activity for the audience and the vlogger themselves. So a healthy eating trend is hitting mainstream media hard for different media um, outlets. So wellness vloggers are seen as young, youthful, attractive and very photogenic. Uh, many use uh, social media platforms such as Instagram to post the majority of what they're eating or maybe in like fitness gear. It's become, it's become an enormous business now with even celebrities joining the craze such as Gwyneth Paltrow. She has no nutritional background but she has started her own uh, wellness website. So many have a box out such as such as British YouTuber Naomi Star, the photos on the slide, has a book out on healthy recipes, but again she has no background in it. So 
The idea of a new healthy eating craze has hit mainstream media hard and, and many are jumping on board. It doesn't seem like such a bad thing, but it does have its downsides. So such as the influential bloggers or vloggers are not uh, regulated and many have no background in this field. So look at point two, social media often blurs the line between virtual and reality, therefore creating ideas that women should look like the image they are viewing. And other vloggers may be doing it because of the money, the endorsements they get from companies. An example of, being, of it being um, exploited is Belle Gibson, which is the photo at the top and the one at the bottom. Uh, a successful blogger from Australia said she cured herself of cancer from eating healthy. Uh, it brought enormous attention, she got loads of money, and um, Apple Watch were considering putting her app on the Apple Watch when they were making it, but found out that it was all fake and she was doing it for the money pretty much. So, we're looking at different YouTubers that promote fitness. They also talk about fashion, makeup, lifestyle, and their just general day. So, similar with fitness magazines, the majority of the content is about fitness, but they also add in fashion, fashion and recipes. So, the WSG and Women's Magazine have several titles focus on magazines, lifestyle, slimming, health, and fitness. So, the majority of fitness bloggers online are youthful, attractive, and incredibly photogenic, as I mentioned before. Again, similar to magazine covers. So, much like bloggers, the magazine gives info, mainly motivation to the reader. So with the feminist research I've done, mainly focus on the image of women, fashion, beauty, and how to get a man, as I say. Um, this book mainly focuses on magazines, but the, rep the representation of women in the magazine are very similar to YouTube and other social media outlets. So with McGrawby 1999, there's a false, object false and objectifying image of women. Um, second, characterizes the consumer as a dupe of patriarchal power relations. Um, it's, a, it's the capacity of the magazine to produce desires and pleasure in the reader. And then the third one is the relationship between the magazine and the reader is concerned to entertain them. So this novel does discuss the representation of women in media, which does hold importance with how women represent themselves in the video themselves, and how it's been adapted from traditional media onto a more modern media today. They need to sell their healthy lifestyle, and to do that, they need to represent themselves in a positive light to portray their life the best they can. So YouTubers can have a more personal effect on their followers than magazines because they're actually talking to their followers. They're getting them to engage in different activities such as social media and they post content, uh, content regularly. So similar to point two that Robbie spoke of, YouTubers film the best part of their life. Um, and then YouTubers also want to entertain their followers. So then they engage with them and then continue to watch. So with this work mainly focused on how women are represented, it's clear to see that fitness blogs may portray an unhealthy lifestyle with their followers and the listening and following what they're saying, but not possibly representing the women in the best light. Just another quick example, I mentioned Carly earlier on, but there's another YouTuber which I again mentioned on with the book. It's uh, Naomi, she does a mix of fitness, beauty and style, but mainly fashion, but fitness is just seen as an important part of the life. But it is mentioned a lot with the content on YouTube, even though she has no background in it, with, what, with the recipes that she's doing, the fitness that she's doing. Different with Kai, like I said, she's a professional personal trainer and fitness blogger. She blogs a little bit about fashion, other content of her life, but it's always mainly about fitness. So, fitness and being healthy is a different lifestyle, and thus fashion, beauty, and a daily routine of life will become a part of it. So, looking at the more possible negative side, with fitness bloggers trying to persuade their followers to engage in this sort of lifestyle, it's easy to misjudge what's true and what isn't, because they do only post around 10 minutes of their, of their day. So here's, here's an example of a fitness guru on YouTube who runs his own fitness plan. My name is Gregory O'Gallagher, and I'm 24 years old. I believe in taking care of myself, in maintaining a lean and powerful body, and striving each day for self-improvement. Even though I've just woken up, I won't eat for eight hours. This increases fat mobilization, boosts mental alertness, and has profound health benefits. To blunt my hunger, I'll drink sparkling water. Two to three hours later, I'll drink black coffee, a very powerful appetite suppressant.
internet fasting has been the most powerful health discovery I have ever made. It has made staying lean and building muscle effortless. It's boosted my work productivity and it's given me the freedom to eat like a king every day. I simply feel fantastic. <laughs> So, you see, his name's Gregor Bath, he's 21 years old and he's intimate fasting, as he said. Um, in the video, he lives in a big mansion, he drives a Lamborghini, I'm assuming a model girlfriend as well. But there was um, a research conducted that found out that that's not, not his actual house, he, he inherited it from his father, he rented the Lamborghini, and the model is his friend. <laughs> So, it's a clear example that he is selling a form of lifestyle, even, even a lifestyle that he doesn't even live himself. So, he created a lifestyle to sell to others, make them believe something that isn't true, and that's make his followers believe that he has this amazing life. He's almost creating an ima imagined community to sell his product. So, with Sound the Fitness brand, uh, selling a lifestyle is as important as the brand itself. He persuades his followers to engage in this lifestyle by making them believe they would feel like he does. So I conducted a small interview with a small local fitness YouTuber and her name is Emily Solomon. She began, she began on Instagram and then moved on to YouTube. The small interview with only around five questions, mainly focused on why she started her fitness Instagram account, then moved on to YouTube, did she follow anyone else to see if that maybe persuaded her to do it, and then spoke to what were the positive and negative sides of starting one, and then um, I also asked if she believed the fitness world to persuade their followers to engage in the lifestyle, the main focus of this entire presentation. I thought it would be interesting and beneficial to get an insight into the mind of a YouTuber. The fact that she's just she's new and she just started would be quite would be would be beneficial as well. So her healthy lifestyle is clearly incredibly important to her, with the constant posting of what she's eating and so on, the constant product place of mainly mainly using protein throughout the day. You can't really see because it's quite far away, but there's a few photos from one, her YouTube account, and then her Instagram, which is literally just her food. So, she's promoting health, but not for the purpose of health, but for the promotion of a product. There are far more natural and cheaper alternatives, but she's not telling people what to do and eat. This YouTube is much different in comparison to Ogalago with Kino Body and Extreme Fasting. So, the main worry with these types of accounts is the quality to admit to the extreme. She, she, um, she used to watch fitness-related accounts and then became one. So, she looked up those people and then she... Then she thought, well, she became one. She, she wanted to be like it. But the last quote that I did in green, as some people who don't know much about healthy fitness may buy into a diet lifestyle and could be unhealthy in the long run or unsustainable. So followers can see how happy and healthy this person is and strive to become that. But many can't. But many can take it to the, the extreme and become dangerous to themselves. The followers are only seeing a glimpse of their life and believe that if they follow this particular lifestyle, then they will be like them. Fans will want to be like them and want to engage with their because their idols are. So, and so, how do fitness worlds persuade their followers to engage in a specific lifestyle? So, it begins by showing the positive glimpses of their lives, demonstrating how wonderful engaging in this lifestyle is, a more healthier lifestyle in this case. Blogging is such a powerful uh, media tool because it's so intimate, um, intimate and personal. Followers feel as though they know the person on the screen, and blogs are, are a persuasive tool. The audience feels as though they get to know the person, and the selling this particular lifestyle is much easier if you hold a deeper connection than just reading an article in a magazine. You actually see the person living their life. Blogs persuade the followers to engage in that by showing that others can, and if they can, you can. So Health and Fitness is incredibly popular within the media today. It surrounds us all on every social media platform. Fitness blogs do persuade their followers to engage in this lifestyle by demonstrating the positive side that I mentioned before. But, it, but if, you're, if you're educated in it or not, and that's the, the main worry of fitness blogs or any fitness-based blog, vision website and so on. Thank you for listening.